since current gen consoles are based on AMD GPUs, and we all know AMD hardware is not very good at ray tracing, is this preventing game slash engine development developers from using more RT features? How far out are we from seeing fully path traced AAA games instead of just rasterization with some RT sprinkled on top? Hmm. So, and yeah, they use what AMD APUs would probably be a better. Yeah, so I think they're based on like RDNA two, but it's mm -hmm. not quite the same. Like the architecture is slightly different there. But yeah, I mean, we're not talking about a very powerful ray tracing architecture in those consoles. Hasn't really stopped developers from at least trying to integrate ray tracing effects. And mm -hmm. there are certainly games on console that have really nice looking ray tracing features. Games like Spider-Man. Um, there was that Ratchet and Clank game for PS5 as well that has quite impressive ray tracing features given their constraints on, the, on the, those bits of hardware. I think the main limitation for why we haven't seen more ray tracing effects is that mid-range GPUs kind of suck these days. They are not, there has not been a big... I guess innovation has been very stagnant. Performances stayed within a certain range for mm. quite some time now. And if you're making games where you're spending time on all these features, knowing that most people have mid-range hardware, things like, what is it, the GTX 1650 is super popular, which is a very slow GPU. Very slow. GTX 1060 has been popular for a long time. RTX you know, 2060, those sorts of cards tend to be where people buy most of the GPUs. And we're talking about games... These days, that even with ray tracing effects off, are not running particularly amazingly on, especially something like an RTX 2060 these days, is not the fastest card. Yeah, with around. slightly dialed down quality settings at 1080p, you're probably looking at like a 60 sort of FPS experience. Yeah, and that's without ray tracing at all. Yeah, certainly so, that would be the upper limit at 1440p. Yeah, so when you've got these mid range GPUs that are forming the bulk of the market, you know, most people do not have a 3080, which you'd sort of class as. Even today is getting a bit you know, dicey with some ray tracing games. But you know, in the past, we sort of talked about that as sort of a good level of ray tracing performance. And then obviously above that gets even better. But those are expensive products. Mm. So game developers are not going to be focusing hugely on ray tracing effects while the majority of their audience has GPUs that are just flat out running the standard rasterization effects. And that's without even thinking about fully path traced games, which seem like a significant way off purely based on the, the lack of ray tracing performance for those mid-range GPUs. Now, if, you know, if NVIDIA and AMD want to suddenly start producing good quality mid-range GPUs, which they haven't done as much of recently, then potentially that will change. Game developers will have those cards to target. They can start integrating features like that. And maybe that will even help NVIDIA and AMD sell their high-performing cards because if you had like an entry level ray tracing setting that then you can dial up massively to run really well on a 4090 you'd think that might be able to sell a 4090 a bit better than current implementations where the, the same differences can be pretty limited but yeah i think it's the the, the lack of 200 300 gpus with strong ray tracing performance that is currently holding it back but we've seen a lot more games integrate ray tracing so they're clearly heading in that direction yeah. still no they definitely are and um, we've already spoke of CPU performance and the demands on the CPU and ray tracing. So again, you know, you've spoke of not everyone having an RTX 3080 or better. Well, you know, not everyone has a whatever it is, eight core, like a, a 5800X, let's say, or a, a yep. 12700K that would probably be required to facilitate that amount of ray traced effects. So it's just, yeah, it's a hardware demand thing as well. Yeah, it's a very intensive effect on, on all areas. And I think we knew that this was going to happen back when we talked about, you know, the Turing generation about, you know, a lot of the time those cards were sort of sold on their ray tracing capabilities, but we were fairly confident that products like an RTX 2060 would really not be suitable for the ray tracing generation of games. I think we're entering the ray tracing generation of games now, and we are seeing that th those products are not really up to scratch. Yeah. And it was always going to be the sort of five, ten year process to get the affordable mainstream GPUs to the level where they can support ray tracing. And maybe with the 40 series generation, we'll, we'll see more of that. I'm not holding my breath for that by any means, considering what they've launched so far. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a process with these features. It's just a process. It'll take time. Mm -hmm. um, but clearly, ray tracing and things like fully path trace games is the future. It's just a matter of, matter of when. Mm-hmm.